Okay, back with another live stream, and uh, I'm going to go back to work on trying to figure out the, um, today I just got itches all, all day. Okay, so um, on the, um, I'm sorry, my brain's going in circles here. Okay, yeah, I'm going to check my sound over there on my preview. Okay, so I'll make sure it's working. Now, <clears throat> the... Uh, Fedora 14, uh, Fedora 14 system won't mount my 8 terabyte hard drive after I, since I uh, formatted it to EXT4. Uh, and I did all, yesterday I, I spent, well, about four, I've got over four hours of video, much uh, pretty well, well, I've been just working on video, you know, pretty much lately. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, what I finally figured out was that it just doesn't, uh, it's kind of what I was afraid of at the beginning, you know. Fedora 14 is a lot older than Ford Fedora 28, and it does it. It has the XT4 file systems on it, but it's earlier versions, <clears throat> and uh, it doesn't support some of the new features. And they're good features, uh, things that help keep it from fail the file system from failing, basically. So uh, <clears throat> I, uh, you know, I mean, uh, well. There was one fix mention that I found yesterday is to work around, not a fix, but to format it on the older machine, and and then it should work, you know. Then the newer one would be backwards compatible and work, but I don't want that. I want the whole reason I picked it. The number two reasons I picked uh, EXT4 is because I know that Linux will every so often automatically run a, a check on it and fix it if anything's broken, any, you know, uh, any broken, uh, any sectors, any bad sectors, it'll tell it not to, you know, sell the, it'll tell the file system not to use it and all that stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> and if it gets broken, it'll fix it automatically and everything. I've seen it happen lots of times. So, um, sometimes once in a while, you know, if you have a power failure or something, it could actually be in the middle of a ride and, and foul, you know, break things. And uh, it'll, usually on the reboot, it'll fix it. Uh, with the exception, the first time I've ever seen this this exception <laughs> on my Fedora 23 server one night, not too long ago, a month or two ago now, it uh, kept the power, it was a stormy night and the power kept going on and off. And then it was actually a week later before I even noticed it because it was in the garage and I hadn't, you know, just didn't go out and check on it. Uh, and uh, and I'd seen it and it was running, but I didn't think I didn't even it didn't dawn on me that it might be running, but not booted you know to the operating system that's why it was and what it had done was broken the root file system is ext4 inside of L an lvm2 and then so and the home uh, file system is in uh, ext4 inside of a uh, lvm2 well it broke the root file system and i tried everything that i could find and everything you know to fix it and it just what it seemed to boil down to me is that the fixing programs that i'm talking about here uh Let's see, F2FS is one of them, and uh, I always want to call it fixed disk, but I think it's it's something it's something else. But <clears throat> maybe it is called fixed disk, but the command is a little different than that. But anyway, um, it's uh, I don't what I what I saw was it would run happily, but it did nothing, you know. And what it's what I finally decided was that it it can fix the ext4 just fine if it's a primary partition but if it's inside of an LVM then it couldn't do it now if there's a way that you can run the right commands to make it do that I didn't find them and I looked and looked and looked I spent several, several two or three days you know not all not, not like eight hours a day but quite plenty of time <clears throat> and so anyway I decided that was way more time than I needed to spend because I <laughs> on that because I wanted I've been wanting to upgrade it anyway to Fedora 28 now I'm going to do for the door 29 because it's out and re fully released now and I decided to switch machines and anyway that's n other videos I've been working on and I'm, I'm off of that right now because I bought this new hard drive and I want to because I need I need more back I need to make sure I really need real backups right now all, all my videos uh, I run them I make them on this machine and they're all and you know most of them are already are uploaded live to YouTube and then I and they're automatically copied to my five terabyte backup drive and then I delete them off of this machine so as not to fill it up and uh, <clears throat> so that's only one copy of the videos and so there's you know quite a few now it's been a couple of years I've been doing that now so it's making me worry 
I like to have real backups, you know, two copies of in my important files. So um, I don't know if I can achieve that still, but if, if I can, I will. Uh, but um, I used, I went ahead and used the default file system on that 5 terabyte drive I bought two years ago, NTFS. Well, it broke four, at least four times since, you know, for the same type of reasons, power failures and stuff. And I had to fix it, and it was really scary when you've only got one copy of a lot of stuff in it, and you may not get it back, you know. It actually wasn't hard to fix. I just, you know, the error that came up whenever it tried to mount it told me, you know, try running this command, you know, uh, check disk and stuff, the Windows commands, you know. <clears throat> and But I had to have a Windows machine to do it on. And uh, uh, at the time I did, but now actually the only thing I have is my XP virtual machine, and... Uh, I can't even get uh, USB drives to mount in it anymore. It used to. Um, I think maybe they changed something in uh, VirtualBox. But uh, um, anyway, that's why I'm going. Or, uh, so I want to pick the best, most stable file system, and but I want it to write as fast as possible because, uh, you know, a backup. You don't want the backups to run forever, you know. And uh, plus, the Lucky Backup is my favorite backup, but it is kind of. It uses rsync. What it is is a graphic user interface for rsyncing, but it does use quite a bit of system resources when rsync is running. And uh, <clears throat> it, you know, lucky backup when you start it up, it's negligible. But whenever rsync starts running and doing a backup, it it's uh, well. For instance, this quad core with four gig of RAM, I really just have to shut everything else down except for I leave my system monitor going. I'll just show you. I leave this going all the times in case anything gets unruly. I need to force close it, and then usually my preferred thing is well, I'll just I'll be on the internet or you know reading or watching videos <clears throat> during that time. I can't have see like you can see I've got four things running right now while I'm making a video, and usually I would be having well I used to always have right here where OBS is that would be where I'd have Thunderbird, and I used to open in the mornings I would open up Thunderbird. Open up Firefox, open up Crusader, open up System Monitor, and I would run the machine like that until I shut it down. All you know, eight, ten, twelve, however many hours. And uh, but everything has grown. You know, the system bloat, the software bloat over the years. Uh, I've got the you know, I mean, quad cores are not, not a, nothing to toot your horn about, but it's the best, it's the fastest thing I've ever had. You know, the most powerful machine I've ever had. I've ever had. Now I've got an eight core built built for my mom. Still have work out of finish. Um, but uh, anyway, what was my point and all that? Um, go back to my camera here and I'll think. <coughs> so <coughs> um, I have no idea how I got what I was my I was I had a point to the telling that, <coughs> but uh, where was I? <coughs> um. Sometimes I just completely go blank. Because I'll have to... I'll get a drink. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> Check my sound. Okay. <clears throat> so I, I'm completely lost, so let's just start from what I can start with. <laughs> um, okay, I just... I remember what I was going... One of the first things I was going to do... Um, Maybe that all come back to me in a minute. Well, here's yeah, here's one of the, I'm on the yeah, I'm on the desktop. Okay, this was something I just wanted to show side side note side track side note. Uh, my recent videos yesterday, I made some videos testing and trying to tweak the audio delay and trying to get rid of audio delay on the cameras. And uh, this one here, I did I did them live so that I could. <coughs> so that I could actually see what's really happening, you know, during a live video. And plus, you know, it, when I'm done, I've got a new live video showing that stuff. Well, I noticed it yesterday after I was done. I had two copies of the same video, and then today it came up. Now, I renamed this one, but it came up saying, you've got a duplicate upload, and you can't have duplicate uploads, you know. And, uh, and it even told you some stuff like, what could you do, and if you really want that same video up there again. And so that was, I'll, I'll click on it. It was kind of interesting. I, had, I hadn't, uh, so, you know, duplicate upload, 
And the thing is at the bottom that I thought was kind of interesting. If you uh, would like to upload the same video, not, uh, not simply changing the file name won't help. And uh, try editing the video, uh, changing its length, uh, adding extra frames, so on and so forth. Uh, or compressing the video should allow the video to upload. Now, I don't know exactly what they mean by compressing the video. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you comp when you compress files, generally you zip them or, you know, you into a zip file or a tar -GZ or something. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of video encoding and everything, and you can encode with and without. Com Maybe that's what they mean. I think you can encode. Well, encoding, they all have... Cause from what, it's kind of hard for me to remember because I haven't really even thought about it in years, but different video encoding types, you know, MP4, FLV, what I'm using on these video, uh, with OBS Studio because it works the best without too much overhead on my system. OGV, AUG video format, you know, all there's a bunch of them. Um, they have their own compression, and that's how you can especially at the early days when we were on dial-up, you needed a lot of compression to watch the lowest, you know, like a 1320 video. Uh, I mean, not 1320, 320 by 180 or something, whatever it was, 320 by 280 or something video, uh, you know, to, to be able to stream one and watch it live. It was a big deal to be able to do that when they first started figuring out how to do that. <clears throat> and actually, Flash was one of the best ones at that except for it caused your system to use 100 percent of its resources some half the time when it was doing, running because it was using your processor but anyway to and i won't go into all that there's another sidetrack but um avi is a really high quality video format but it doesn't stream because i get i think in because i guess because it doesn't do any hardly any or any compression so um <clears throat> It doesn't stream well. It kind of it can stream, but it will use. It, I guess it depends on the player and the server that you're doing it from and with, you know, from and to. But um, <clears throat> it um, it will usually just start caching, you know. If you can't, even if you can watch it, I've seen it, been able to watch them live. I've done my own and stuff like that a lot, <clears throat> but it'll cache a lot. Most of the time, you don't get through, a, you know, a 10 minute video. Uh, so, you know, it's really quicker and less aggravating to just download it and then watch it. <coughs> so, uh, I guess that's what they're talking about. It's, I don't, but the thing is they don't accept, um, YouTube only accepts certain types of videos, MP4, FLV, and some others. And I can't think of a single one of them that wouldn't already be compressed. So, anyway, that just threw my mind into thinking. But I didn't delete this just because uh, <clears throat> I'm going to delete it just so that it doesn't make me go, what's that, every time I see it. Because uh, I know for sure it's just a duplicate, and I don't need to do it again. Plus, I have a backup video, if I was wrong about that. Okay, so um, I think I'll close. No, I'm going to use the browser. So I'll hit the home button so that I'll be ready to search here in a minute. Because that's what I'm going to do. I want to show now what I want to do next is show. Um, let's see, cam. I've got cam two just on my monitor, so that won't help much. So what I'll do is get on camera one, <coughs> and I'm going to pick it up. <coughs> oh yeah, I'll have to switch mics two to do this. Switch mics two to do this so that I can get up and run around. So that I can get up and run around. Okay, so let me make sure that worked. <clears throat> okay <clears throat> I forgot to I was sitting there listening and I realized finally oh well, if I don't talk there won't be no sound test for me to do over here I was listening to the preview okay now what I'm going to do is I want to show you the reason the biggest problem with these, hard, well, the, it's not the biggest problem. The biggest is when the NTFS gets broken. But the reason I'm uh, <clears throat> I've been talking a lot about the bad cable design lately, but I, I did do a video on it, but I haven't been uh, showing anything about it. 
the bad proprietary. Now I've got them unplugged, they're not mounted, you know, they're not running. Now this is the new one, the eight terabyte. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way. Uh, I guess I'll show them one at a time because it's really kind of, okay, there we go. Now it moves, it, but it's much stiffer, you know, and it's not like you could just barely touch it and it'll fall out. <clears throat> yeah, that's about how, the way that camera did, that's about how stable <laughs> these things are. Now this one, I think, okay, that's, I was going to, I thought that was the power on the top, but that's not. Okay, now I'm having to hold, they're, they're light enough that you got, I'm pushing down on from the very, I've got them stacked, so I'm pushing down. But I, that one, I guess it's really, yeah, I don't know if you can tell, maybe if I do them both at the same time, but that thing is loose as a goose. And he, what it does is it doesn't come all the way out. Like I can tug on it, it doesn't come flying out of there. Just barely tug, I mean. But it will lose connection which causes it to shut down. And that can happen in the middle, you know, if you accidentally uh, bump a cable or whatever, or, you know, if you bump it with, you know, you can see my other cables here. It's just, I mean, everybody's gonna have a different setup and maybe less clutter, you know, less wires. I've got a lot of wires. But it just, it's just no reason to make it that way. I mean, the, the standard USB plugs I'll show one here in a second let's see if I can get my hands to where okay now I've got them let's try it the other way put this hand up here and this hand here okay I'm going to move them up and down It's just not being demonstrated well that the fact that the, if you had them in your hands, you would really, you can feel just the looseness of the bottom one, of the older one. And it wasn't that loose when I first got it. And, but like I said, it's just stayed right there. I've only, t you know, I have it at two years. I'm probably, I probably, guarantee I haven't taken it out of there and moved it around five times, you know. It's not, I don't use it as a portable drive, you know. <clears throat> and... Uh, I don't use, don't unplug the cable, and, and I just don't, even though I've got a lot of stuff here, I don't move all this stuff around a lot. This is the one to the top one, and it's, I actually put it through this, that, uh, that's screwed onto my rack here. This is my computer rack that it's sitting in, but uh, <clears throat> that's a cable tie of a thing that's actually re, remove, reusable. It came, I think it came in a product, you know, with to strap, strap something in a box and it's been really handy. I don't screw it, uh, tighten it up all the way so that I can take things in and out, but it actually is helping that. I uh, figured out yesterday the hard way because when I was moving things around, I was, I was taking this out, unplugging, it's, it's plugged into the back of the Lenovo i5 and I brought it around the front here, right around here to uh, go around to the back of the, the the uh, Fedora 14 system, the red black BioStar. Now you see why I call it red black because it's a black case with red lights on it. And this part of the mic stand here, this is where you tighten the boom to where you can, you know, tighten and loosen it. It got hung on over over that or under, maybe under, but anyway, it got hung by one of the handle. And I moved the mic without seeing that, <clears throat> and uh, I almost had this off of the floor. And. Uh, and it, when I, I realized that it was really tight, you know, but then I went up here and felt of it and it hadn't done a thing up here because, um, not up there, but up here, a little higher, hadn't done a thing to this because of that strain, basically the strain relief, you know, ca caught it. And so, and that's just an audio cable that I can, you know, plug into the laptops is what it's hanging there for. Goes up to my, goes up to my, uh, I'm always talking about it, my patch bay which goes um, to my amps, goes from there to my amps. But um, let me go ahead and put this back in its place. I'm sorry that it's a bad video, but I don't have a, a this tripod is really wonky. It never does the right thing at the right time. Okay. Uh, 
So I've been, I just wanted to show that since, uh, make sure those are all plugged in. So if I just, I'm going to turn them back on here in a little bit. I've got them unplugged to make sure I couldn't damage them by messing around with that. But, uh, so that is the reason I keep saying I want, I'm probably going to, I know I'm going to take the, uh, trying to get that set. All right. If part of that, it, it'll sit still in one spot and then the next spot, it doesn't hold. There we go, that's good enough. <clears throat> so I want to take the uh, <clears throat> the one that's out of warranty anyway, I'm, pr I'm sure I want to take it out of there because it's, it's the one that the, the, the five terabyte, the one I should have told you was really loose. Uh, I've been having more times of it not mounting up and not sure why. I know I, know I haven't, I haven't, I don't find the cable to be loose or anything. And so I'm <clears throat> afraid that it's beginning to not work well, you know, might not be the hardware or, or maybe even the well. uh, or maybe even file the, system uh, is getting old. The NTFS, it's already been broken and fixed four times. And uh, so <clears throat> take what I want to do is back up everything that's on it to the eight terabyte and then uh, put that into a machine. Probably maybe the Lenovo i5. I still haven't figured all that out yet. I was thinking I was saying this. I was thinking about putting, it makes more sense to put the biggest drive in there if I did this, but putting one in uh, this laptop that I have that does, has a broken screen and I'm, I haven't, I've had it for years and I never used it for anything. <coughs> and, but it's, it's, it's a dual core with, uh, I think I have three gig of RAM in it or something. And uh, it runs fine when I run it, you know. <coughs> And anyway, I could use it as, I could turn it into a backup file server is what I was thinking. And it has a battery so that it wouldn't even go down. And of course, everything else I have would because I don't have a backup, a UPS <clears throat> here. I have one, but I have one, an old, a, a small one, but it quit working and I never was able to buy another one. It, it, it Half of it doesn't work at all in the other half. It's like six plugs. Half of it I used for just the plugs and the other half doesn't work at all. I bought a new battery for it and it still didn't help. I thought it was a battery. So I ended up taking the battery out and just using half of it all for years, you know, like I bought it in the early 2000s and it broke about two years after I got it. That was a refurb, cyber power refurb. That's when I, that was one of the first refurbs I bought. And well, I think I've only bought two or three refurbs ever. And well, two of them I know what for sure is broke, broke after not too long. The, uh, my DVD writer with a built-in ATSC digital TV tuner, it worked for about two years. The MREZ-17, sometimes I remember that stuff, uh, Panasonic. I like, <laughs> I liked it, and I still like it, but I never have. I always wanted, you know, it won't play DVDs anymore and record or anything. I used to use it. I used to record my TV shows and watch them. Now I just watch everything on the Internet now that I want to watch. <clears throat> Mostly I watch YouTube stuff now. 98% of the time, maybe more, more higher the percent than that. I watch stuff like that instead of regular shows. <coughs> but, um, so, long, long drawn out explanation and de demonstration, but it really, uh, you know, when it comes to backing things up, USBs are convenient. You know, I just the first one that five terabyte was the first USB drive I'd ever had, and they are really are convenient. What I used to do is what I may go back to doing is uh, I had a machine with backup drives in it, and anything I wanted backed up, I backed it up over the network. And with 100 megabit con wired connections, that can be slow with a lot of data. So you know, the USB is a whole lot faster than that, <clears throat> and uh, I think if I remember the specs for USB two is like 450 realistically about 450 uh, megabits i think and of course ethernet's very top is going to be 100 megabits so that's quite a bit of difference <clears throat> but you know now i have two gigabit routers and the wireless on my d-link is 1200 megabits that's even faster if i was because i'm not going to use wireless but 
but that then it hit me today that laptop i was just talking about well it's got a it's got 100 megabit ethernet and the wire the wireless is only like 56 so that's not wouldn't be good for a backup server it'd be it'd be slow um but i did just buy three i got them i haven't checked them out and made sure they work yet but i got them the other day three uh gigabit ethernet adapters so i can put them in desktops you know and uh and and the lenovo 5 is gigabit mom's machine well mom's has an onboard gigabit but uh, it's not working and worked in fedora 26 but it doesn't won't work in fedora 27 and i'm going to put 29 on it here soon and i already tried 28 in a live system it didn't work so and I researched all that a lot, and it's, uh, I don't think it, it may not, I may not be able, the only way I might be able to get it to work is to use, a, there's a program, I can't even remember the name of it, that you can install that will uh, basically, I guess, reverse engineer the uh, Windows driver and build a driver. And maybe that's what I did, because I saw some hardware list of reports where it was working in uh, Fedora 26, and it said reverse engineered so-and-so driver. So maybe that's what I did, and I just flat can't remember it. I looked through my videos. I can't find a video where I made a video of doing it. Maybe I didn't make a video because I just wanted to get it done. <coughs> Usually when it's something that's – if I did do it, that would be one of, the, one of the only times I've ever done that. I usually don't have to. Usually I find something that works. If it's not in the Fedora or Debane, whatever system I'm on, repos, then I usually find the proprietary driver, but uh, – you know, Linux driver. But there's not – one i saw one a really old one for like fedora for that chip that particular chip that's on there i saw one for, and evidently it's not evidently it's not that new of a chip because it was like for fedora it was five or six downloaded it before i realized how old it was and i tried to install it and, I, and it wouldn't install and i was like what how old is this thing <clears throat> so anyway yeah networking has got its other set of problems if you want to do backups over the network <coughs> Or hurdles to overcome or whatever I prefer wired uh, <clears throat> because it's much more dependable than wireless especially as well as, as more and more and more wireless stuff keeps fighting the you know filling the airways fighting for space and causing interference with each other <clears throat> uh, especially I, I think there'll be more problems than than we've already you know than there already is right now <coughs> so um that's why i'm going through all this trouble and and i'm going to keep keep going to try to figure this out now i don't know if i want them plugged back i'm not going to like i said the, the usb cables are still plugged into this machine but uh yeah let me go ahead and close this i'm making my backup video and everything looks good um so i want to do a little more research and see if i can find i know that i can't uh that I can't um, let me go ahead and get to my folder from where I was doing my last research. I guess. Oh, that's that's a different problem. That's not my. I was helping somebody with that USB flash drive not mounting. Brand new USB flash drive not mounting in Windows 10. Now I remember where I have it. I put it in my folder about file systems. So I had originally thought maybe I'd do B, well, yeah, BTRFS because I had remembered reading about that, and I decided it actually writes way, way slower overall. Well, it, they kind of there's a comparison test that I saw, and it they showed that it through about four, not just actually maybe it was those because I think that's where I took the, those that title from. But I guess I can go to it. <clears throat> yeah, this is it. Pharonix is a test suite. And, uh, yeah, I think this is one of the tests. But, yeah, here's EXT4, BTRFS, XFS, NTFS. I, I don't even know what NILFS is, F, uh, NILFS2. Pretty fast at writing. In that, there's different ways they did it. Test files, 1,000 files, 1 megabyte. And then that's riser. You can't read it all, but that's riser FS. And then this one was uh, 1,000 files, 1 megabyte, test, raw, Oh, they're saying who won. Okay. Let's see. Make sure that... Okay, the, the title is underneath it. There we go. 
You know, I like it better when the title's on top of things. That makes more sense. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, easier for me to. Do. So anyway, you can see ext4 is pretty fast. Uh, well, it's not. It's not the fastest at all. Well, it's it's neck and neck with everything else except for nil fs. And then the next one though, that's five thousand files that are one megabyte, four threads. So, so I guess that was lit. No extra threads, I guess, up here. And then this one is four threads <clears throat> it's faster than anything and then uh that's that's why i decided to go ahead and do ext4 and then this one is 4000 files 32 subdirectories now my backups are going to be going to the multiple subdirectories probably many more than that very often every day they will because uh, that's just how many different folders i'm coming from you know and going to <clears throat> so it does good XFS surprisingly jumps up in that, and I can't remember if that's, I think it's, XFS is not the one that comes on your, on flash drives and SD cards these days, it's EXFS, I think, I'd have to look and see, but uh, it's, well, I'm going to say it's kind of the newer version of FAT32, and I think it was kind of based on FAT32 and then made newer, better, and different, but definitely ntfs is not fast and and i know from all your the years of experience ever since they invented it you know microsoft invented it that it breaks easily i've used it for years used to you know windows xp windows 7 or vista for about five minutes you know <laughs> what a joke vista <clears throat> but um anyway um I, that one kind of got my interest, but the thing is, there's lots of graphic user tools to work with e EXT4 or, well, FAT32, which is what I've been using all these. That's the best one. That's what I like to use. It's not the best one, but it's <clears throat> the best one for my uses for a USB and SD cards because usually what I'm doing is uh, putting ISO images on them to boot them, you know, and install systems and stuff so um let's see there is another page here of this it's a four page deal I, the first time i saw this article i didn't notice that uh then to yesterday i went back and noticed it and i went through this took a while going through it yesterday you see ext4 goes really good in uh initial creation of a file really the fastest look how slow ntfs is on that and uh disk transaction performance now i don't know exactly what that even means myself but uh, the good thing the thing that's cool about btrfs is that you can build software raids and stuff except for i don't really need that i don't have enough hard drives you know well i don't have that even with eight terabyte and my my five terabyte you know it you really only had four and a half terabytes it's about half full already the eight terabyte only you only get 7.23 or something like that terabytes and so it won't take long to fill it up so i can't divide it up like you know 50 50 and make a raid out of it or anything software a raid out of it <clears throat> although that would be nice at least i don't think i can uh, i thought that would be cool to have that ability in case i wanted to do it but it the administration of it and if it gets broken and everything well you kind of got to do that in the command line anyway but anyway after looking at this and that's the only test i looked at I, that and I don't think it would mount in Fedora 14. That's what I thought. I just thought that from what, you know, knowing how old. Because my Fedora 14 system is important to me. It's got software that I can't get anymore. You know, it's not available anymore. And sometimes I need that software. And, um, and so I can't, I, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to just blow it, blow it away. Blow it off and put something else on there. <clears throat> but um, I don't use it all, all the time, but when I need something that's on there, you know, then I'll need it. So, um, let's see. Now, I figured, I decided, I figured out yesterday. Now, there's one of them. Okay, it looks like these are the last two I looked at, and that's where I finally discovered. I'm not, I'm just going to skip on down. Okay, so this is the explanation that finally showed me, okay, yeah, uh, my suspicions were right. <clears throat> the uh, error 
EXT RFS couldn't mount uh, this the drive because the different versions between the formatter make FS EXT4 and the mounter. So I, I formatted it with you know the new version what uh, of make FS in uh, cheap parted just autom you know automatically I didn't do any command line stuff but the mounter is old in Fedora 14 and they were saying well you could either upgrade the mounter program let's see oh, well this is backwards from what th th this problem they're having is a little backwards from mine uh, they were actually building a Android on an SD card, Android system on an SD card. But it was the same. Uh, anyway, I'll skip the rest of that. Let's see if this one, I know one of these kind of explained it <clears throat> in a real succinct way. Yeah, they're, they're talking about that error. This is the error I was getting. It could be happen. It could be happen on EXT3 or 2. 2. <laughs> this error mean that oh, somebody's smart but they don't know English too well uh, this error mean that there is enabled file system feature that does not support by the kernel that's, that's it right there uh, the old kernel I remember it's two point something in Fedora 14 and we're at like four something now <coughs> and Fedora 29 uh, let's see I've got an error I've got an error when I make ext4 partition with the ESP E2FS progs make up make fs dot ext4 newer than my kernel. So first solution, and then it tells you ways you could get around it and do all kinds of wild stuff. <laughs> Actually, I said well, uh, basically you know you're you're kind of going back and their suggestions. The only suggestions they had was, uh, well, this is showing you how to do it. Like I guess they're in formatting within the command line and I'm not even going to go into that but you know and the, the first suggestion was simpler you know just get on your old machine and reformat the drive that's what one of them said and then it'll work and then the new machine should read it and write it because it'd be backwards compatible <coughs> but then you lose the most one of the most deep probably the most important feature and that's those new features in AXT4 that help keep you from losing data and I read what they were and stuff and I, I don't remember where that's at so that's where all that to say where I'm at right now. Um, so what I'm wondering, I'm going to do a, a couple of searches. I'm trying to. So I'll say, I'll just say best, well, why didn't that work at all? It's really just because, oh, I guess it's weird. That's weird looking results. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> best file system for USB backup hard drive. Because this is a hard drive. It's not flash memory in a USB case, you know, adapter to make it work with USB. Oh, the, if you have Windows, it's probably NTFS, so-and-so, so-and-so. Let's see. I guess I need to put Linux in there because uh, I, it, well, I do know uh, that uh, I didn't mention that. Another reason why I picked EXT4 is because there's a program that you can put on uh, put on Windows systems um, called EXT2FS number two, EXT2FS. I got the words all backwards. I won't put best in there. Let's see here. Let's see. That you, you when you put words like best in them, you're going to end up with a lot of advertising, you know, kind of BS type stuff. You might get something good, but you might get a, you'll get a lot of BS too. But I thought that might get me some comparison articles too. And we'll see. There's one right there. Let's see. That says solved, but I don't know what. <clears throat> so there's one. Best. <clears throat> so.
so anyway, um, that's the other reason why. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it'll work with the XT4. I don't know that for a fact because I don't remember trying it. I have with the XT2 and 3. But, uh, you know, but I do want to be able to write to it from Windows if I can. I mean, I could do it over the network because I basically did that yesterday. I, I did do that yesterday. Uh, I, I booted up my uh, virtual box with Win XP virtual machine, and I was able to write a file right to it. But I, had forgot, I was like, oh, how can I do that? Cause, and because I know it, I did, there, what, EXT2FS wasn't on there, I looked. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, the way I was using it as a shared drive. I was sharing the drive with the system and what it does is it shares it as a virtual network connection <clears throat> in virtual box that's how it does it and so that's why it worked it was right into a network drive so that's what got me back on the well maybe i should just set me up a backup network you know backup server for my network <clears throat> um local backups you know and um local network only not internet and um So, um, yeah, so I keep going blank. <clears throat> so let's see what we got here. All that welcome to so-and-so, it just makes you, sometimes I start reading that and like, that doesn't sound like a question, you know, because I'm not really comprehending it. Okay, oh, this is for Slacks, not Fedora. I might should have put Fedora in there. We'll see, let's see. When does Linux and Mac uh, make fat? Yeah, well, yeah, that's the default answer, and it is a good idea, but uh, it's good. And I, but the thing is, uh, you know, this is a huge hard drive, and, and FAT32 wasn't ever meant to be used on eight terabyte or seven and point twenty three terabyte hard drives. And um, for years, they said you couldn't write a file bigger than three gigabytes. Well, I've been doing it for years four years and uh the other day i saw something saying oh you it said you know what you can and can't do with it and it says you can't write a file bigger than four terabyte now maybe that's i mean gigabyte and maybe that's the case because i know i've been able to write to <clears throat> i swear i've seen six gigabyte files written on my fat 32 drive so i used to like what i would do is i'd take a hard drive and uh formatted as FAT32 and then put it, I have a USB adapter that you can plug into any hard, you know, an IDE or SATA hard drive. And I used to do that. And sometimes, I, a couple of times I built multi-boot. I would use it for multi-boot and backup, you know, but a portable backup. Back, back it up to that drive and then go plug it into my main machine and then back those files up to the hard drives, internal hard drives. I do stuff like that sometimes. But uh, then the power supply died for it and for a while there, I didn't I didn't use it at all, and then I realized well I can it uses a you know a Molex connector like inside a regular desktop computer, and so I just extended one out of my uh, one of my machines so that I can just plug it into the to the hard drive. Actually, I have my I, I made my power supply amp with two power computer power supplies and two car amps, and I left it so that I could use it as a power supply as well. But the problem with that is, is when I plug that hard drive adapter into, then the spinning disc makes a noise that drives me insane. It makes me want to scratch my eyes out <laughs> over my speakers. And it's not going through the audio inputs. It's going back, you know, it's, it's a going a backflow through the AC power, you know, back through the power supplies. So, uh, uh, well, I guess it's actually a back throw through the, no, not AC power, DC. It's going, it's sending noise, electrical noise back through the DC cables through the power supply, which ends up getting to my amps and to my speakers. So <clears throat> I knew that was, uh, well, I wasn't surprised when it happened. I don't remember if I expected it or not, but uh, I don't think I did. But, uh, you know, years ago, I used to play with car amplifiers a lot and, uh, you know, radios and stuff. And, well, here's the thing. I was always into hot rodding, and so I would put, I always put uh, spark plug wires that are not just carbon, but they have real wire inside because they won't break down and fail on you. Uh, and and they and I I think that they also send a, a a harder spark, less resistance, send a harder spark easier than the carbon ones are. I don't know what they may be making them out of other things now. I'm talking about back in the 70s and 80s. 
<clears throat> but I'll tell you one thing. I bought a, a set of XL hard wired. They're, they're carbon on the outside, but wire on the inside. Um, spark plug wires for my uh, 76 Chevy Blazer in 1992, and they're still on there and working perfectly right now. They don't leak. They don't. You can turn off. W- w- quick way to see if your spark plug wires are leaking and grounding out which will really hurt your performance. As a matter of fact, and it can get to the point where your car won't hardly run, your engine won't hardly run, is, you know, open the hood in the, at nighttime with the engine running. And if you see sparks jumping out of the, jumping everywhere, you get some really bad wires. Mine still don't do that. <clears throat> There's a lot of tests you can do. But um, the simplest way I've ever seen is, uh, is to do that. <clears throat> A lot of tests you can do with a multimeter and stuff. But um, I never could remember. I always had to follow. The only one I could remember was a voltage test. It send, just send voltage straight to the plug wire, you know, to the battery. From the battery, through the plug wire to your multimeter and uh, ground. You know, put the multimeter one in, the ground on ground and the positive on, you know, on the positive. I just stick the wire on the positive side of the battery and, See how many, and when it was in the books, it would tell you how many volts you should be getting. I think it's something like 11 volts or something. I don't remember <clears throat> exactly. Anyway, uh, it wasn't very accurate. You really needed to learn how to do it with amps, and that was a lot harder to do. I, matter of fact, I don't think I could do it with my what I my realistic analog multimeter. I think you needed a real amp meter to do that. So I don't know if I don't think I ever tried it with my new. I have a newer multimeter that does amps and tests a few circuits a few uh transistors and stuff like that but it'll do uh it'll test a capacitor it has a capacitor test in it so i don't know it might be able to test one good but i haven't tried that um okay here's somebody that likes xfs supports larger file system journal if the disk controller tries to take shortcuts and you lose power now there you go losing power is something that's going to happen to me i don't have any battery backup so i don't want that ext4 is also good They're both journaled both support extended attributes anything's going to be better than ntfs i would have to agree there's xfat Severe file limitation, file size limitation, yeah. Oh, it relieves it. Okay. Well, let's go see what we're, I, I was skipping, I guess I skipped it. Oops. Oh, I had that selected. Let's not, oh, there it is. If you're only going to use it with Linux and go with any of the native file systems, the XFS. I've never seen XFS on anything that I know of. I've just seen, know it's there. <laughs> I've read about it before. I used to, I, a few years ago, I read quite a bit about different file systems and I forgot most of it now. ETRFS, if you need interoperabil- interoperability between Windows and NTFS is best. File system. It's quite mature, built in kernel, unlike XFAT, uh, which is fuse driver only yeah i used to have to you used to have to use the fuse driver to to use ntfs but you don't anymore that's true i know that but yeah i don't want that one then <clears throat> let's see oh i didn't mean to do that I, I was i found out what i want to know about that this is all right this is this i don't usually like reading forums because you're just getting people's opinions but you can kind of tell by how they write their statements is what you, usually not always if you're reading about something you don't really know about you they can sound like they know everything and they don't know much of nothing they're just bsing but so if you kind of know like i'm saying i have studied it and worked with file system three uh, linux file system since 2005 um, i can kind of tell when they're t- giving good advice or not what i'm trying to say <coughs> so <laughs> go with ext4 and move on yeah now this is what i would say until recently never had any trouble with power outages or anything 
He said, including on Luke's and LVM. Well, my one problem was with LVM. He says LVM, not L. This is 2015, so might have been before LVM2 was even out. Maybe. Well, I think it was out. No, it was out. But I think my Fedora 14, which I believe is pr before 2015, right before it maybe. It's hard for me to remember the years. They go by so fast. Um, it's LVM1, I'm pretty sure, or just LVM. They didn't call it LVM1. They just called it LVM. You know. Now we're on LVM2. Oh, someone says that. Oh, I was saying, that's not when, that's registered. So this whole thing is in 2016. There we go. Okay, or I guess the post could be over a period of years, too. That does happen. That somebody was saying, oh, no, everybody's using. Uh, the kernel support is only, but this is in 2016, not 2018. So it's only uh, read-only. You're having to use NTFS 3G. I remember that, too. Yeah, that's the two things you needed. Uh, NTFS 3G and Fuse to get the NTFS to work on Linux. And it did write painfully slowly until I got this 5 terabyte hard drive two years ago. So that would be 2016. Uh, it writes fast, really good. The only problem is it's broken three times and I'm scared I'm going to lose all my data. It might break so too bad, you know, and I can't fix it. I've seen it happen to me before where. Uh, I've seen it some use sometimes I could get back the files of lost partitions with test disk, another Linux program for rescuing, you know, lost partitions and stuff. But sometimes you can't and you lose the data. So So it's a lot of back and forth about it. Just all opinions. Okay. Uh, that's why I like things like that other one that was, uh, well, that Pharonix test suite, that's what they do as test systems. So I knew their data would be, you know, and their little graphs would be about as accurate as you're going to get. That's why I liked it. But, uh, yeah, it says solved. See, when you see the word solved, don't take it for <laughs> what it sounds like. It generally will be, all it means is that it's a thread, you know, a form thread, and somebody marked it solved. It don't mean that the problem was solved. You can read them over and over and over, and all you'll see is sometimes a bunch of arguments back and forth. It's whoever runs that form, they want it to be marked solved because it makes things look good, I guess. That's how to geek. I've read that site quite a bit. Sometimes it's all right. We'll see. Okay, this is just going to be somebody's article. 2017 at least. Okay. Oh, they're just talking about basic one. Well, there's one, I, I don't know what APFS, I, I, APFS is. HFS I've heard of a lot. Oh, that's on Mac, that's why. EXT on Linux. So I guess that's all they're going to talk about then. Let's see. Yeah. He's just going to talk about the the, base, the main ones. What is HFS? Yeah, it's for Mac. Oh, and APFS is for Apple. Say, oh, you Apple fanboys were just laughing at me. Oh, that's okay, because you're an Apple fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to spend like four times as much for a machine that does half as much, go right ahead and have fun. And, and then be paying out the nose for your, all your software. And when it's broken, they won't even admit it's broken. And when there's vulnerabilities in your operating system, they won't admit it. And, yeah, I could go on. Well, let's shut up. <laughs> Maybe somebody will see that. And I'll have a flame war on this video for, for no good reason. <laughs> Hope not. <sighs> okay. Um, if it's to clone your hard drive. Okay, I don't think I'm going to really find too much uh that's why i didn't do this originally you know uh, you really kind of go on what you need you, you, oh dang it there we go <laughs> hit the wrong thing on my arrow keys i'll try best again <laughs> bestie bestie bestest 
this is another how to choose. Um, you have to go on your knees and your in your own experience, you know, or or ask somebody that knows, which is kind of what you know. This is what you're doing on the internet, looking stuff up, trying to find somebody that knows and ask them, what is a file system? Do you plan to use your USB drive? Well, that's how do you plan to use it? Okay, there you go. The the typical players there <clears throat> okay so they're not even talking about the others okay so I need to uh, there's the ones I've already saw I don't think I'm going to find a darn thing that way I think that article um, oh I, where am I I sure <coughs> I mean, it's not, it doesn't take, you know, 10 minutes. When you get it right, I had trouble because I, I forgot to, don't, if you're doing a USB drive and it's a, and it is a spinning disc inside of a little box, when, and if, like if you delete, if you delete partitions, reset the drive, turn it off, unplug it, plug it back in. Don't just unplug it, unmount it. And if it's mounted, well, you shouldn't be, if, if you're deleting partitions, it should already be not mounted, but unplug it, either unplug the USB or unplug the power and plug it back in one way or the other. That'll do the same thing. Well, it will on my Seagate drives anyway. I don't know how. Maybe some older ones might be made. But uh, you want to turn the drive off, turn it back on. The fit, the power, you know, is turn it on and off. And the USB or the power adapter will do that <clears throat> with mine Seagate drives. Um, because if you don't, you'll break your formatting. It won't work. That's what I did. Um, so after, if you reset the drive... Then, ref then, then add your partition. You know your your file system. I mean, well, it's going to have at least one partition. Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, then you'll be good. And I like Gparted. Uh, it's the most dependable and easiest to use one I've ever used. Graphic user interface, and it's available for Windows. I think it's in here. Where is it? Gparted. Let's see if it's available for Windows. Maybe not. Or did I? Oh, I misspelled it. Well, there's the word Windows, but it's not in that article. Well, you'll just if you're in a Windows and you want to try Gparted, you'll have to go. And that's that's just an article anyway. It's not the page. That's not their site. Oh, there's their site right there. I guess. Oh, Softpedia. Oh, uh, yeah. They're they're on GitHub or somewhere. I don't. Not quite sure where they're at. I didn't realize that's what that was. But it is open source. And uh, I don't know why I saved that. I actually thought that was going to. I'm gonna have to delete that. I'm now I want to know if I even have the there it is source forge that's where it is now here's their download page I guess I guess it would be up there at their little link I don't uh, <clears throat> source forge is not where you usually find stuff like this you usually find it like on github and stuff I'm real. I used to actually. I discovered SourceForge long before I discovered uh, GitHub or anything because I used it. Uh, you know, it had Windows. It has. It had. Wait, I think it still does have Windows software on here too. GitHub, I think it generally mostly has Linux software or Unix-like software on it. Files, I guess. You don't, and, and if you're in a Linux distro, just go to your, you know, your uh, app ma application manager and just search Gparted and install it that way. That'd be the only good, best way, for sure the best way to do it. So, I guess it doesn't have a Windows version, maybe? Because I don't see anything anywhere saying Windows version. I'm going to click on it just to see what happens. Oh, it's just going to download it, so I thought. Well, I got time to get off the page. All right, so, um, and I don't think, uh, okay, now you can click on that. It'll show you what's in there. 
There we go. Okay, you can get it in a zip, an ISO. Well, that's there's all kinds of stuff in there. Oh, that might be, yeah, Gparted Live. So, yeah, if you need uh, to do some part, oh, cool. If you need to do some partitioning, uh, and that, you know, I mean, there's other distros that have like multi tools in them, but if you just need to do some partitioning, that's really be the safest way, actually. Uh, well, let's say you don't have, <clears throat> well, for instance, you've got a Windows machine and you need to do partitioning. You don't run Linux. Uh, well, you could boot up to this. Of course, if you don't run Linux, you may not be some, some learning curve to figure out how to boot up to this, but you could boot up to that and. Uh, um, now I'm wondering, it's like, ooh, maybe I do want that. Departed live. I just now realized that. I want that. I'm going to get it. That'll be the newest one. Clicking on the green link would be the newest one. So that's what I want. Save the file. Now, I, I have a add-on. It didn't work, though, but I have an add-on, VTZilla, that will scan every file you download. Maybe it's too big. Scan every page you go to and every file that you click on a link like that. Uh, I don't think every link you go to, but any of your download, everything that's a download, or if you save a page, that's what it is. If I would like to say save this page as, yes, it will. Uh, scan it and make sure, and scan it with a whole like 50, 60, 50 to 50 to 65 virus scans. I'm just going to put that in there because so I'll be able to find it. Okay, now I'm off on another place here. Uh, <coughs> now I have two entries for it, which is fine. Okay, now um, the Pharaonix drive comparison. That's where I was wanting to go back to. Uh, yeah, see how that first page, uh, if it just talked about a little bit about the different file systems and then it uh, had this and I couldn't read it and I never noticed from down here below it has a drop down list which I think is a terrible idea of how to do things but it also had that that's what I saw really well first I saw the drop down list but that was like the third or fourth time I went back to the page because I couldn't find any better places to go and I thought maybe I can read that but that's just jumbled up and, and maybe it'll show up it's nothing in there to see though. I click, there's links and you click on them and it doesn't take you. It took me to like information about an, an Intel Core i7, you know, and I was like, wait, what are we, what's going on here? Oh, now here's something. Will it take me to information on VTRFS? No, it takes me to open benchmarking. Oh yeah, I'd forgotten about that. 15 results, four systems. I think it's other tests. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's not readable. Let's see if there's more down here. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that I don't, I don't. Those numbers are just arbitrary numbers to me. I don't know what all that means. Somebody might. Somebody does, obviously. Oh, now here we're getting to something that makes sense to me. <laughs> Charts. <laughs> okay. Um, file compression. Yeah, some of these benchmarks are just, you, you know, nice little blue lines don't mean anything to me either. If if uh, they don't they don't compare it to something in the world that I understand. Okay, Apple Apache. Oh, okay, SQLite. Okay, I'm not reading. I'm talking. I don't talk and read well at the same time. Gzip compression. That, see that? If that? Oh, there it is again. Right there. Okay, okay. Gzip compression. Okay, how long does it take? Well, if they would say, okay, seconds, less is better. There we go. See, it's all jumbled up, but I finally, okay. But that's all BTRFS. So then SQLite, that's website database. Apache Benchmark, that's that's what I run my website on. Okay, Postgre, another website database. Management, however, I, you know, I'm sure I'm not saying that exactly right. Compile Bench. Okay, that's compiling a program. I don't know what IO zone is. Okay, so I'm not going to go on. This is for people that are <coughs> really into the technical data. The one, the rest of those pages that was helpful to me. 
I'll go to each one and see if there's any more things I missed. Okay, yeah, and page two has uh, random right. The one that I thought was the most interesting was, for me, was the one about how long does it take to write to multiple folders. And I don't remember, I think it was on page three. Or which one does the best, I mean. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, subdirectory. There you go, 32 subdirectories. Okay, this is the one that really <coughs> fits in my, my, my interest. So, back where we started. Now, these are really the main ones that I would be interested in. XT4 really overall ones in my book. Uh, I don't even know what nil FS2 is. Uh, I think I looked it up. XFS, I just read stuff that made me uh, decide that probably. Oh, riser FS. That's the one I'm actually remember hearing about. I think it might be really new. Uh, let's go see if we can. Spelled it wrong. <clears throat> well, let's see. Oh, there. Okay, well, there's, it does work with Linux. So I figured that, or it wouldn't have been in that list. It's basically about stuff you use with Linux. <coughs> Not to be confused with ReFS. Huh. There's another one called ReFS. I don't know what that means without quota support. Seems like it's pretty old. I was just talking about no uh, open source being well, it's called open source now. Switching to ext3 in, in October 12 of 2006 from riser fs. So I don't. It must be pretty old. No, I mean just because it's old doesn't mean it's not good. But but for instance, ntfs, it's just I think it's got all the features they can put into it, you know, and all the s security and safety they can put into it. It's just they. You know, after so long, you've got to start again, you know. <clears throat> you, I mean, well, not always, but generally it's what happens. Yeah, so it's not, not what I, I'm, now I know, you know, that's not what I want. <clears throat> um... I, I'm just going to see what the heck nil FS is or nil FS2. Yeah, I've already looked it up before. See, it's already in my, and I've just forgotten what I saw. Being developed, this is, what? Oh. They always say that from when I don't even notice it sometimes. Sometimes I do, but it's written like it's an advertisement, you know. They, they don't like that. That's good, I mean. That, that way, you know, the people that are doing this don't get to just put their blurb in there and <clears throat> you know anybody can join up and edit these things but I've never tried doing it, it I, I've never seen anything that I, I knew enough to join in <laughs> the people that do this are good <laughs> most of the time anyway
If I tried to read this out loud, I would just mumble it up. I'm so confused today, so I'm not going to try. Sounds good. Continuous snapshots. Nothing. Using a copy on write technique known as nothing in life is free. Is that what that stands for? Nothing in life. Neil FS. Nothing in life is free. FS. It's only appended, never overwritten. Reduce seek times. Huh. Minimize loss of data. I don't think I can do that in, in Gparted, and if it's something you have to only do in the command line, it would be too hard for me to administrate, I think. <clears throat> for example, data loss occurs in EXT3 file systems when the system crashes during a write operation, and I have seen that happen. Uh, usually, it could be fixed by the automatic fixing, for, you know, when it boots, but not always. ext 4 is way, way better on that. That's the features it has that I don't want to lose. It really sounds like it's full of great features. That one was kind of escaping me, but <clears throat> that sentence, but. Inspect dev SDA2. There's some commands. Oh, I think what they're saying is you could copy, you could read and copy the basically built in backups at the same time have the live file system mounted and working and being written. Mount from LFS. Continuous snapshotting. <clears throat> Version capability of the entire file system. Users can even restore files mistakenly overwritten or destroyed just in a few seconds ago. Since NFS can keep consistency like conventional LFS, it achieves quick recovery after it does sound like an advertisement it does. Uh, it's probably written by the people who you know work on the project but I'm pretty sure it's open source project I think it is so uh you know, they generally, open source people really don't get a chance to lie because even if they want to, somebody else is going to look through their code and say, hey, you're lying about that. So that's the whole point of open source. So, <clears throat> or you got a bug here or there, you know, all that stuff. What's the 28, 20, year 2038 problem? Is that like the, what's, what do they call it? The one, the, 2000, the year 2000 one? Ah, loaded kernel module. No recompilation recomp of the kernel required that. I wonder if that means it would work in older systems. Hmm. One thing, though, long, long, no limit of snapshots until the volume is full. Well, that sounds like it could possibly fill up your drive really quick. <laughs> I mean, 
know, you're going to, is it going to automatically decide how many snapshots are you going to get to tell it or what? You know? <clears throat> Mountable is read only. Mountable concurrently with the writable mount. Convenient to make constant backups during use. So you've got read, read only and writable mount at the same time. But it's all in one file system. That's what's cool about it. Quick listing of the administration. Okay, multi, multiple snapshots. Quick crash recovery. Read ahead. This sounds ideal. It sounds like what I've what I've been dreaming of. <clears throat> but I don't even know. I'm gonna have to look in G part and see if I can it'll even handle it. Okay, so, ah, what do we got here? Okay, it's available for the Bane 5 and later. Oh, okay. Ubuntu CentOS Fedora. Building and installing an LFS utils is required. Oh, in order to use an LFS on Fedora 14. Oh, 14 to 16. Oh, okay. Here we go. Well, it does work. Building and installing. NILFS Utils 2.1 is required in order to use NILFS in Fedora 14 through 16. Fedora, for Fedora 15 and later, user also, oh, also needs to build NILFS kernel module with explained steps. Oh, so that's going to be a lot of hard work in every system that I have. But just for me to plug that drive in and mount it, <coughs> that killed it right there. Sorry, man, that would be so cool. That, that's my dream file system. That, uh, now, maybe BTRFS does all these things. I don't, when I read about it, it didn't, I didn't see all this. That's the main thing. This is a backup drive, and that's the main thing I'm interested in is, you know, preventing loss of data and, all, and not having to have a whole RAID system, you know, with a whole bunch of expensive drives, <clears throat> either software RAID or hardware RAID. I mean, then you got to have, I want a server and everything, and they generally come with RAID cards, but <clears throat> um, there we go. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so um, let's go ahead and look up BTRFS again because now I just realized I did not thoroughly check over its features and everything. I know I looked at something that had some information. That's their wiki, and then there's Wikipedia. Okay, Wik Wikipedia. And why is it better than the XT4? <laughs> 2013, well, that's a long time ago. Okay, this is their Wikipedia. Wikipedia. I think I've seen this page before, maybe. Each modern copy on right. Cal file system. And it's open source. That's really important because, like, uh, you know, no, but well, like with NTFS, it's owned by Microsoft, and so I'm sure that's one of the reasons why it hasn't really progressed because they, and one can help if they want to to fix it. You know, the code is proprietary and closed unless they opened it up. And I don't, don't know about it. See what the features are. Major features. Oh, 
practical. Okay. I don't know what that whole thing means uh, to what I don't know what that little symbol means there. That's a math thing. 64 byte, 16 EIB. I don't know what EIB is. That's some super large file size, like bigger than terabytes and petabytes and all that. I don't really know. <coughs> And, but practical limit eight E I B. Has snapshots, writable snapshots, read only snapshots. So it's got sub volume. Oh, really? Separate internal file system routes. This may have more features than the other one. Impressions that it uses. File striping, mirroring. Oh, this one will do. Yeah, this one will do uh, software RAID. I knew that. It does work with us. It says flash storage awareness. That's a real problem you get into. Uh, uh, flash storage, flash. You know, so your USB, your onboard flash on your phones, your SD cards, they're all flash memory. Uh, it's a, that's what, that's what the chip is. It's a, you know, it's flat. It's a flat. That's what they call it. The chip that's doing it, it's flash memory. And, uh, and hard drives, you know, they're, they're actual spinning discs. They have a shiny silver platter that looks like a record. Looks like a silver record, you know, photo, phonograph record. And uh, it actually, and it has a a, pl a player arm, you know, uh, um, a big beautiful metal. It's just the most beautiful machine you've ever seen. If you've ever seen the inside of one or just seen pictures or whatever, and uh, if you take one apart and look at it, it just just blew me away to take, see one. Uh, had a broken one that I opened up. <clears throat> I think I did. Yeah, I did. And I carefully put it back together because I was what well, still was hoping to fix it. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, and they're built to last. They do. I mean, sometimes they break, but most of them last for years and years. I mean, like I've got some that are over ten years old. They're still working great. <clears throat> Actually, I've got some of some of those old computers that are probably 15, 20 years old that still work. I just don't use them all the time because the machines are so old. So I'm jabbering. Does it does. They're wording it all differently, and it kind of seems like it does everything the other one did and more. I forgot the name of the other one already, but uh, online file system defragmentation—that's good. I'm, I'm gathering it says it's, it does it it's automatically online. <clears throat> oh, online while the drive is in use, while it's up and running. Okay, while it's mounted, being used. That's what. I, that's what. It now, maybe you have to run a defrag command or something. There, I, I forgot what it was, but I actually found out there really is a defrag command from Linux, and I never could have found it. Or maybe there is now. I don't know if there was before, but I always was under the impression there was no such animal. I've seen it in forums years past. There's no such thing. Of course, you see that stuff all the time anyway. But offline file system. In place conversion of existing ext234 and riser fs system oh really that's wild okay it has features no wonder it's slow it's doing so much at the same time <clears throat> so it doesn't write super fast but it's got a lot of features Now, features by kernel version, that was the next place I was going to go to. Oh, okay. Well, let's go ahead and go there, and then I'll save that in my... Because I'm wondering, that might tell me, because my door 14... Okay, it doesn't go back to 2 point whatever. <clears throat> it goes from 3 to 4. See, so yeah, okay. 4.7... Oh, 4.19. I guess that's where we're at now. 
Oh, and there's a whole. Oh, there is. Uh, and I guess they mean Linux kernel. Yeah. By Linux kernel version. Oh, by Linux kernel version. What are these other ones? I guess that's the versions of the file system. Yeah. That's what that is. Okay, so. I want to go by Linux kernel version to make sure I'm seeing what I. Oh, okay. 419, 418, 4. Then we're going in reverse. Well, let's look at 419 first. That's the newest one they've got listed here. Allow defrag on open read only files uh, that have read route permission, tree checker. These are just the changes. Those are just kind of like these are our fixes. Okay, now here's some 2.6. I think I might actually be 2.4 on Fedora 14. I have to go look. It was RC1 on 2.629. Or oh, that's probably the version of not the current Linux kernel though. I'm not quite sure where the ends. Go back to where I was. Okay, there's where I and then I clicked on Linux features by kernel. Uh, I didn't really go over that. <coughs> Scrub, read all data, verify check stops. Oh, okay, auto repair. Oh, okay. This is version. We we are talking. Are we talking about the version of the of the operating system? I mean, the file system or the kernel Linux kernel? I don't understand that. Right there. That's why I just jumped back away from it. I wasn't quite sure. Sure does have a lot of nice features. Can you hear the jet? <clears throat> Boy, there is a lot of features. Oh, well, that's going up to the newer. Whoops. I hate when it does that. If you miss that daggum blue thing, they used to make them about twice as long, and I, I miss them. I, every other time I try to get that blue thing and pull that. And it goes all over the place. And then you're on a long page like this. Can't find it where you was half the time. Okay. So. Um, didn't really help to. I never did put that in my bookmarks. So it sounds really good. I just wonder. Okay. There's something. Benchmarks on Fedora 17. Okay. Well, let's see. This is evidently their benchmarks they did, I guess. No, this is some other website. This is pretty old, though. This is Fedora 17. Uh, what? I mean, that's one of the things I'm wondering. Uh, interested in is I'm on it something that'll work on Fedora 14 so okay, that's just comments okay this is what you got to go to page two
But they did it on the same hard drive on a laptop and divided it all up and did their tests. <clears throat> Bonnie Plus Plus, I guess that's a program. Reads and writes. Random. I'm not paying attention right now because I want to see if I find something that actually looks like it would matter to me. I'm going to the last page. I want to see your conclusions here. Avoid the XT3, XT4, and XFS are two mature, reliable file systems. Generally, BTR is generally slower, which we saw in that art other article, but it has many unique features. Yes. Okay, so I think. Oops. Is that page one? Yeah, that's page one. I've already put that in there. Okay, so what I think is I need to look. Butterf butterfuss. BTRFS is pronounced butterfuss? That's stupid. I guess so. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this one is, I think, the, the most likely candidate out of, you know, all these that I could use, let's see, I'm gonna close that page now. I mean, well, let's see, here's what I need to see <clears throat> is uh, see if I can even work with it in the GUI because if I had to do, it's just too tricky for me. I make too many mistakes to try to, to do formatting and stuff in the command line, even if it's simple commands because I get one thing wrong and I format the wrong thing or something. My eyes, I always say this lately, but why is because my eyes swap letters and numbers have ever since I was a kid and all over, just all kind of up and down, left and right, up and down between different lines in a paragraph. And so um, it's not like a matter of, oh, if I tried harder, I'd do better. It doesn't matter how hard I try. Sometimes I can do, do okay, but most of the time I have quite a bit. So, um, I don't have anything turned on or plugged in. I'm going to plug in that, the one I'm going to work on, just so I, you know, only thing I have to look at is my hard drive and if my mouse finger slips or anything, I could break it. So, let me uh, get down here and plug this in. <laughs> It boots okay because it was when was it? Uh, there it goes. Yeah, right. one time yesterday, I guess it was when I plugged it in. Oh yeah, well, it's formatted, you know, with ext4 and it's got a few files on it, and but it works perfectly. Not only does it uh, mount up, but it opens the file browser. I don't know why it does that. Sometimes if I unmount the uh, five terabyte. And then plug it back in, it'll mount like it should, but it doesn't do that. And which I don't, maybe I found some settings where you can tell it not to do that because I don't like that file browser. I don't want to use it, but I'm just can't remember. So I'm just kind of wondering. Okay, so I'm going to have to close the cheap part of it. I wasn't thinking.
got to you got to have uh, the the drive mounted or, or at least even if it's not mounted it has to be connected to the machine where the machine can see it you know so the software can see it so um, make sure it's closed before I try to open it again you know I think I'll close this uh, yeah let's close the browser give uh, the machine a little bit of let it clear the memory out for all that browser cat uh, well the RAM I'm not talking about browser cache the RAM Okay. Yeah, we don't want to touch our operating system. Okay, here it is. And uh, by the way, this is where you go to look for drives in Fedora. Run media username. And then see, this one just has a, the ID it got from the drive. You know, I didn't put something in the block, in the block, I guess. And so it got, it got that long set of numbers. <coughs> Because the five terabyte says Seagate expansion drive in there. Right now, that's good because I can tell them apart. System couldn't even tell them apart before, and um, I accidentally was <laughs> I had unplugged the five terabyte and forgot about it. Well, I think I unplugged it and, he, and plugged it back in, but the system, it's I don't know how to explain it except it stacks them. The USB uh, devices, it stacks them in like first come, first serve, but then if you take one out and put it back in, it doesn't go back to the top, it goes to the second position. So it wrote to it for a while until I realized what it was doing. I thought, why is this backup taking so long? So, but uh, I actually thought after I realized that, I was like, well, heck, I need it to have the same name if I'm going to use it as my USB backup drive so I won't have to redo all my lucky backup setups, you know, all my profiles. But uh, anyway, so I may try to make it look, you know, make it say Seagate expansion drive in that section. Not just here, but over there. Not just here where it says it, but in the name, but also in the, the file mount point's name, you know. That's what that is, the file mount point. Or not file, file system, mount point, sorry. Yeah, so the mount point... Somehow I need to tell it to give out Seagate expansion drive just like the I don't have the five terabyte plugged in. I wanna make sure I didn't mess it up. Or I could show that, but uh, anyway. Okay, so I'm on here. I wanna be able to see the flags if any comes up. I'll bring it back. <sighs> okay, so I'm not gonna do anything, I just wanna see uh Yeah, okay, so we can't even look into format 2 with it mounted, so we're going to unmount it. And so it's still plugged in, still seen by the system, but it's not mounted. See, now there's no mount point in there. So um, now we can say format 2. Okay, we can do, yeah, we can do BTRFS. Is that, that's what we're, we, uh, that one I knew I could do. It was that other one I didn't know if I could do. I'm getting myself F2FS. I forgot what that one is. That could be the one that they always put on uh, SD cards and stuff. I was thinking it was EXFS. See, there's XFS, and that I had it, those two confused for a while. Oh, RiserFS, that's the other one I was looking at. Yeah, RiserFS is the one that you have to do all that work to make it mount in Fedora, old or new. I don't want it. XFS is similar to FAT32, but the, I think it's... No, no, it's not. It's EXFS that's similar. And I think it's owned by Microsoft, too. I uh, don't want it, so I'm not going to go into it right now. <coughs> LVM2, I don't want that. That only thing that can mount LVMs, I guess it's a good file system because, you know, I mean, it's not a file. It's a, f it's, I guess it's a virtual file system, I guess would be the right way to describe it. Uh, maybe that's not right, but that's in my mind. That's what I'm. What it is, uh, because you you see, like my Fedora system has root ext4 and home ext4 inside of the LVM too. Uh, I'll 
I'll show in a second. Maybe I don't know if I can show that. It depends on which program you're in as to what details you can see. But but that's sidetrack anyway. And here's the ones that I can do. Uh, all I know to do is to try it. I hate to just keep reformatting it, but uh. <clears throat> I really don't know how to tell that it was going to do what I needed to do unless I do that. Hmm. Okay, let me go before I forget. I, I will show what I was talking about. So, see LVM2 PV. Now, in here, maybe you can see. No, it doesn't tell you what's inside. That other one, it will tell you, I think, the uh, genome disk, I think it's what it's called. Um, I don't know why it seems important at this moment, but whoops, did I click the close button or did it crash? I mean, I was trying to go back, trying to go back to the other drive to make sure I didn't accidentally do something to that. I must have hit the close button by accident. I mean, it was going to close it, but not right that second. Okay, so the discs, it's just called discs, uh, but if you get now it's a weird one and maybe this is not even the same one that's in fedora 14 because but it doesn't it's weird as it doesn't have it does have that menu drop down there but it doesn't have the thing that like about this program or any of that stuff so you can find out its real name or any of that stuff so uh is it showing up yeah there it is eight terabyte well, here's the eight terabyte you know it's pretty small but well you can see it down here yeah the UUID that's what that really is that long number is the UUID <coughs> okay and uh, XT4 now let's okay now let's go into my uh, well here's the disk okay LVM2 right okay so this view doesn't show you what's inside it just says LVM2. But this particular file ma uh, disk management s program, you can see each, each partition separately. 54 gigabyte block device. This is root. This is a root partition right here. It's ext4. That's how I discovered that. I did not know that's what they were doing uh, inside the LVMs. I thought LVMs were just LVMs. And I knew they were logical volumes. That, that's, that's the right word, logical volumes. Uh, which are like, I, what did I call them a minute ago? I forgot what I called them. They're logical volumes, and the others are primary. Like uh, the boot partition, is it showing up in here? It's the boot partition, which I know shows up in uh, Departed. It's a primary partition. And you can you don't have to use logical volumes. You can put everything on primary partitions if you want. And that's actually how uh, Fedora used to have boot and root on primary partitions and then LVM was the home direct home part, partition and they changed that at some point without telling me so I didn't know <laughs> so <laughs> I noticed it at some point but anyway um, see home ext4 so that's how they do it now this is Fedora 28 and then 29 is the same I've seen it um, And this has got some nice features and everything, but but doesn't have all the features in it that the Fedora 14 version does, and I'm pretty sure it's the same program. Pretty sure. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, but it's never been dependable. I don't. I haven't tried you know formatting ext4 or three or two or whatever, but I've done. Fat32 a lot with my, you know, USB sticks and SD cards. It does, it does, one time it'll work and the next time it'll get a big error and, the, and your partition will be no good and not usable. So I don't use this for partitioning, but all the other features seem good. Uh, and it may be something to do there. It's actually the program that you partition or, and write file system to a USB, flash memory, USB stick, SD card, whatever. It needs to be able. It, it needs some sp some specific features to be able to do that well. So I found that out. 
when is our limits either one and i have seen a lot of posts uh, a lot of articles where people were posts where people were having trouble with the windows uh, on board you know utility it, it get, especially windows 10 and then matter of fact that was one of the folders when i first started this video i ran into when i first got in my browser that was the research i was doing uh, for somebody else so to try to help them because they were having it would work in fedora 29 but not in windows 10 the, a brand new S, uh, usb stick <clears throat> and that's what i finally found out i did a little reading but uh, Back to Jeep Parted again. Yeah, my fingers slip or off the mouse sometimes, or, or I don't know. I, well, sometimes my hand will jerk. I think is what I, I've had that trouble for many years. I think maybe that's might have been what happened when I closed that on accident. But yeah, see in here, you see LVM two, and even if you go into the information. Still doesn't break it down in the quite the same way. Uh, it, oh, well, there's another thing in there. The swap, the swap is in there too, and it used to be its own. I don't know if it was actually a primary partition, but the swap partition is in there. Logical volume swap home and root. Those all three are in there now. It didn't used to be that way. So uh, yeah, I use both of those all the time when I'm do, doing anything like this, just to help me understand what's going so <clears throat> now i'm thinking I, I mean it won't hurt uh is this mounted or unmounted it's still not mounted or is it he can't mount it yeah i'd have to reset it i'd have to unplug it and plug it back in but see i can still see it uh in here <clears throat> and i can format it because i unmounted it a while ago don't format anything or delete uh you know partitions while it's mounted it will it will cause real trouble especially a regular hard drive that's what i was trying to say a minute ago like you can on i do it uh most of the time on a flash memory uh if i'm like if i need to delete partitions well i've read that you could do it and sometimes i guess i've forgotten and done it and it found out it worked but you can delete a partition and then go ahead and format it without any trouble most of the time anyway not always and uh, because I had trouble on my SD card the other day, my third, my third, and the brand of the card makes a difference. The brand of the flash memory, the manufacturer, they're not all created equal, and not not even just forget good, bad, or uh, you know ugly. Uh, they're not exactly the same work working mechanism, you know. You know, <clears throat> so uh, that's where you get into a lot of headaches with that stuff too, the flash memory. So. Um, uh, the, the safest, the, the, especially with hard drives, like I did this the other day, forgot. Uh, I deleted the partitions I didn't want because there was two. So I needed to delete them in order to be able to get, get you know, I just deleted them both to get down to no, no partitions and then formatted it. But I needed to restart the drive, you know, <clears throat> before I uh, continued on, which would involve, uh, you know, uh, after I deleted the partitions, you have to unmount it first, delete them, then close your, your partitioning app, Jeep Parted, close it, and then restart the drive. Uh, it's not mounted, so you can unplug it or turn it off at the AC power adapter either way. Plug, you know, Turn it back on, plug it back in, turn it back on, and then get Jeep Parted back up, and then go here and partition it. I don't know of anything else to do but... Let me open the now you I get myself turned around. I want to make sure I know which one it is I'm interested in. I don't know anything else to do but try BTRFS. And uh maybe I won't I'll fix it to just do it right now, but you know I'm dying. I'm getting to where I need a break really bad, so and it's almost a two hour video right here, so maybe I'll take a break, reboot everything so that it's all fresh and uh and then maybe I'll do that think about it i don't want to do it just for the heck of it because i've already got a good uh good ext4 going here but yeah btrfs is what i was looking at and uh and that is what i was looking at that comparison 
there's one thing let's see where oh yeah the one i was interested in, it jumped to that on its own and I actually that's now I remember i wanted one well, the main thing i the thing i do every day is to back up to multiple directories btrfs is almost the same in speed as ext4 so that wouldn't be a bad thing all the other ones you know like say right here writing 5000 files uh, i probably won't be doing 5000 at a time anyway I guess that's all at once, all one man. Of course, my files are all going to be bigger files anyway, so that's not not a, all that useful of a comparison, smallest file size. I don't think. I mean, I know I'm pretty sure there's a huge difference between writing one megabytes and writing three and a half gigabytes. You know, file size. You know, <clears throat> and of course, there's a lot of a lot more wait time, right? But anyway, I think it affects the systems differently. Uh, so anyway. Um, yeah, I kept seeing this one jumping out ext4, and I thought, well, I don't want that btrfs, you know. But uh, one of the main things is writing to multiple directories, and that's just so close it doesn't matter right there. And with all those features, and the, and like I said, uh, ext4, I, I have never had trouble with it, but once of losing it, losing a partition, but. And I've been using it ever since Fedora 14, maybe before. I don't know when they implemented it, but at least Fedora 14. So that's a long time. But uh, all those extra features, those safety features, and being able to have snapshots built into a single you know, file system without having to have RAID or anything. Well, and it does actually support software RAID, so if I ever wanted to do that, I could. It sounds like as much many features as it has, you might be able to convert it over to RAID even though there's already data on it, if you well, it might be a little risky, but re, you know, re, you'd have to like resize it, and well, actually, you might no, you don't have to resize them. You don't have to make separate partitions. You can do the RAID with inside of that one file system. That's right. So yeah, I'm gonna go take my break, and when I come back, I will try to. Uh, I'm just going to format that drive to BTRFS and see how it goes. Because if it mounts in Fedora 14, problem solved there. And as long as it will, you know, mount, not, it, sh it looks like it's going to mount just perfectly in, you know, Fedora 28 and 29, you know, on the newer ones. So that would solve all my problems. Now, Windows, it probably won't. It probably won't work at all in Windows, but... I'm not even sure that ext4 will. I'm not sure if that ETFS progs. I need to look that up. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it in my. What is it? E2. No, not E2FS progs. Uh, ext. I'm surprised I remember that, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's right. No, nothing saying, did you mean this or that? So I'll look that up. I'll we'll go through that um, when I come back to and see what it supports. That's another major factor there. Okay, that's the main things I need to know. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm going to go then and we'll be back in a little bit soon as I can. Mm -hmm. 